Hello everyone, I'm Mar Benitez, Library Assistant here at the Seguin Public Library, and this is our fourth installment of our virtual technology series. And today we're going to be discussing internet safety, and that's safety during navigation, safety in searches, and today we've got Dr. Xiao and his students to help discuss that. Hello community members, and I'm glad you're joining us today. Um, I am here with my students, Peyton and Mark, and they are experts in this week's uh, uh, topic. So they'll be sharing with us their knowledge and skills and uh, many other things that we need to know of as we are navigating the web. So again, um, uh, my name is Roderick Shaw, I'm an instructor at TLU, and of course, very happy to be given this opportunity to be here with you, as well as my students. So Peyton and Mark, the floor is yours. All right, Dr. Shaw, thank you. Hello, everyone. <laughs> I'm Mark, and that's Peyton. And we're here to talk about navigating the internet safely. And of course, we'll be talking about the different dangers that one will come across uh, that you'll find on the internet. So this is surfing the internet, the web safely, how to protect yourself from online dangers. And uh, Peyton, would you like to start us off from this one? Yeah, of course. Awesome. Um, so real quick, I'm Peyton. Uh, and I'll be, we'll be switching off back and forth telling you about um, internet dangers. So for, this is just an overview of uh, these are the more common dangers you'll enter. You'll be a uh, experience when you're online. Uh, if you look closely when you're anytime you search on the internet, you'll more than likely see one of these. Um, so just to go through them real quick, spam, phishing, adware, malware, Trojans and viruses. Uh, they all have their, they're all like unique and they all, all pose their own threats uh, when you're surfing on the internet. Um, it's really, really important that you can spot these because a lot of times good ones at least are uh, hidden and, and disguised well. Um, so being able to recognize them when they present themselves is very important. And we'll go over each of these. So the best protection. So before we get into all the different specifics, the best protection that one can find or that one can have when preventing these problems is basic common sense. And that's very hard to find nowadays, you know. Uh, it's always better to prevent a problem before it becomes a problem, you know. And of course you can, there's different uh, software protections and virus uh, protections and all those sorts of programs that can help counter that. But uh, I like this quote below from Alfred Huger, the vice president of engineering at Immunet. And he says, people have to understand that antivirus is more like a seatbelt than an armored car. It might prevent an accident, but it, it might not. So it's always best to, to just use your common sense. And if it's a site that doesn't seem trustworthy or you don't know what the source is, uh, it's best probably best not to click on it or to investigate it further. And uh, as you can see, there's some questions to ask yourself when, when uh, seeing these. Like, is this from a source I know? Is it credible? What does the source want from me? What's it trying to do? What's, what's it trying to get me to do? And uh, what could they do with my assent, which is simply by clicking it? So now we're going to go over some of the specifics of those uh, different threats that I had discussed earlier. Um, so spam, the first one, is very, very common. If you have an email, you're going to get spam. Uh, it's, it's basically just unsolicited bulk email. It's a uh, reference to Monty Python, so it doesn't... It's the spam that you eat the, the spam meat. Uh, I don't know exactly why it's why they chose that, but it, it's just emails that you're not, you're not, no one's trying to directly communicate with you. Uh, it's not like the kind of emails that you get when you're trying to set up like a date or something with a, with a, a colleague or whatnot. Um, these are when uh, oftentimes companies, when they sell your email, they'll sell your information. These are the kind of imp the emails that you're getting is when they're trying to solicit you with uh into into purchasing something uh trying to get you to reveal more information about yourself um and most of the times now emails have gotten good that they have a uh they have pretty good spam filters however a lot of it does get through um and sp these spam emails can contain other uh threats in them as well so that's why it's good to be able to spot out spam emails when they do get through and uh, that Monty Python sketch, which I'm glad you brought it up because not many people know that's where it came from. It, it, it Basically, the sketch revolves around repeating the word spam and spam over and over again. So to such an annoying degree that I guess that's where it got the term. And in this picture, we added to make sure that uh, you can recognize some forms of spam, you know, <laughs> and that'll, that'll uh, try and entice you to click on it. Like, 
just looking down the list here, you'll find uh, uh, have arthritis pain. There is help for you. So that's like a enticing thing to click on if you happen to have those problems. No terms with no subject. That's things you have to watch out for. Um, so, and of course, there'll be very bad punctuation or capitalization or just not very good grammar at all or spelling. That's one way, good way to figure it out. Or if it's in all caps. But yeah, those are just a, a few <laughs> examples. Uh, phishing is the fraudulent practice of sending emails uh, supposedly from reputable companies or organizations or entities, let's say, uh, trying to get you to provide personal information so they can exploit you. Now, uh, it's a very common kind of, of scam that you'll find. And, and usually they'll be asking for personal information from you, like usernames or passwords to different accounts you may have, or even credit card information, which, as you can imagine, can be a bit detrimental. Um, it's always important to, to make sure you trust the source before you give them personal information. And typically, uh, sites that you trust, like at, at TLU, uh, they warn us that never to provide personal information to any account, even if it's supposedly sponsored by uh, the university. Uh, so that's just a very common uh, thing to remember. Just don't give away your personal information uh, if you're not sure about the source. Uh, and of course, like, like, uh, like Peyton said, that there are good filters for emails, but, but a couple do slip through, you know, so you, you have to be very mindful. And uh, this is one example of, of phishing uh, from Global Pay, which I'm not even sure what that is. It says, we regret to inform you your account has been restricted. And sometimes it's sent to people that don't even have an account in that. <laughs> so that's probably one good way to tell whether or not it's, it's real or not. Uh, also, you probably wouldn't put in login information in a, a Safari document. And yeah, and it says, dear customer, it, it, that indicates that it's more generalized than, than actually, you know, saying your name or saying anything specific about you. Um, a good, uh, to add on to this, a good way that I've um, recommend to people when they ask about this is to think about if someone were to come up to you and say this to your face, how, like, would you go along with it? Like, what, what would you say to it? What would you, um, does that sound like something that a normal person would come up to you and say that's like in good faith? Or like in this case, if someone just came up to you and said, excuse me, person, like, I don't know who you are, but your account has been restricted here. Take like, fill out all this, give me all this personal information and then we'll fix it for you. But that's, that's a good way is to like, look at how much information they have. Like, again, like Mark said, they, they say, dear customer, they don't know who you are. They're, they're just trying to get you to say whatever. That's a good way to put it, Peyton. And also one more thing, you, you probably see that uh, they misspelled a word in this message. So, so oftentimes if you find a misspelling or whatever, then it's probably not legitimate. <laughs> uh, so adware, uh, this is, again, um, a pretty common one. You see it a lot in websites. However, uh, adware is more specifically like uh, um, things that you will, like it's a virus essentially that you, you can download onto your computer that will then um, automatically play ads uh, and show ads on your computer. Um, it's similar to the ads you see online on just regular websites. Those, um, However, these ones are a little more malicious because they are they're being downloaded onto your computer, onto your onto your uh, into your software, and then so like anytime you open up um, certain sites, it'll like automatically launch other these ads, and then um, it can be risky to click on them because they may seem like it's selling something that you want. However, um, just because it's on the internet, you know, it's especially you shouldn't uh, think it's true at all. Most times these uh these ads you see on websites are malicious links to uh, websites that are full of other links, or they're just a download to uh, uh, for other malicious uh, software. This is another one you want to use. You really, really need to use your common knowledge, your common sense, and really think that just because it's it may be showing you something that you do want that you've been looking at. Um, it's not always going to be something that you want. And naturally, it's good to keep your security updated, your security software updated in your computer. That's one thing that you can also do other than downloading uh, software protection or things like that. But 
but yeah, it's better to use your common sense. And there's, of course, there's a couple of examples down there that have occurred uh, in the recent years, or or not so recent years. Some of them are back from when uh, the internet started. And yeah, these are what these are what typically you would find uh, in adware uh, generations. It, of course, which are generated automatically. Just best to avoid them. Trojans. Uh, this one is pretty similar to uh, uh, adware or viruses even, which we'll talk about later. But basically it is, uh, a Trojan is designed to breach the security of a computer. They're trying to gain your trust disguised as something else. And once you uh, assent to giving them access, they are able to do pretty bad things to your computer. If they could delete data, they could uh, modify it. They can drastically slow the performance and, and a number of other things. Um, I don't know if any of you are familiar with uh, with Greek history, but if you are, uh, it came from the Trojan horse, which that when the soldiers hid inside the wooden, the giant wooden horse and were pulled into the city, they snuck under the night and uh, destroyed the city of Troy. So, so yeah, it's just another word for uh, for disguising as something else, but uh, in reality being something else, something much less innocent, you know, and that picture down there really demonstrates it. The, you might hear the term the back door, and that's basically allowing uh, one of these Trojan horses to uh, to uh, enter your computer and affect it. This is this is another one of the the uh, threats that are paired. You often see paired with uh, phishing schemes um, because the the a com- or someone will email you at, posing as a company saying, "Here, download this link," um, because it's it's something you need. It's it's an ad. It's or, uh, it's a uh, antivirus software, whatever, sometimes just as simply as clicking that link, you're giving this virus a lot of access to uh, sensitive data inside your computer. Um, so it's, that's another one where you can avoid those a lot by keeping a sharp eye out for phishing and spam threat. Okay. So a virus, um, a Trojan horse is a type of virus, a very common type of virus. The virus is just is a more broad term for any kind of code that will... Um, that can infect other computers and then rewrite more code to to ex, to expand itself. Very similar to how viruses uh, in the human in the biological aspect work. This is one of the most common things you'll see, and they 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 can be very very dangerous, um, or sometimes they can be very benign. Um, an example of a very common one back earlier in the internet history was a the I love you virus. Um, this one it it was an email and the subject it said I love you. And then in, in the email, it have a link to the virus, but disguising itself as a love letter. Uh, so when you clicked on that link, it would then program your computer to send out more of these I love you emails. So they would send it to people in your contacts. Um, so it would look like it's a, a love letter from someone that you know. However, it's a virus that will then not only send itself more to further more computers, but it also will basically brick your computer, which makes it inoperable. Like a like an actual virus, like a like a, a disease virus. You know, I don't know how else to call it, but I guess you can call it that. Um, the viruses, computer viruses, replicate themselves to multiply and then spread to other places, and uh, that's why they're particularly dangerous. Uh, I listed some more examples below. Like uh, the creeper virus was one of the very first ones that developed uh, uh, in 1971, and uh, and that, that was basically like from there where viruses began to become more common. Uh, Calm Warrior A was one that affected cell phones and, and Bluetooth more. And the L cloner one, it was an interesting one. It was developed by a ninth grader. And basically it inserted data into a computer that upon display uh, this poem of some kind. So yeah, viruses can do a wide number of things. So just try to say no to it. And this is a, uh, one potential virus that you may found, you may find in the red circles, as you can see, they uh, are ways you can tell how it's fake. Like it says, dear Commonwealth Bank client. And again, it's generalized. It doesn't say your name or anything. It seems like it is linked to more than one accounts. So bad grammar. <laughs> Linking your MasterCard to multiple, multiple accounts. Uh, yeah, no, that's, you can probably tell from there. And of course, click here and complete the steps to remove limitations. And it's like you don't know what's, what you're supposed to do once you click it. So again, what do they expect you to do? <laughs> just what, what do they expect you to do to, to, to help you, supposedly, you know? So yeah, this is just one virus, but there's many others. And 
all in all, just use your common sense. That's the best defense against protecting yourself. If you're unsure of anything, if there's any doubt at all, just don't click it. Just avoid it and save yourself the trouble. And these are some of our citations. So thank you. All right. So I'm going to get you started with a couple of questions. So for starters, I know we get, we get a lot of patrons here at the library that are concerned about their email. Um, and whenever they get, say, a phishing email or a suspicious email, uh, is it dangerous just to open it? Or is it, does it really become dangerous when you click the links? What, what can you tell us about that? There are uh, very, very few uh, dangerous emails to just open. It's normally going to be the links within um, or the, the files within the email itself. Um, however, there are, although it's like very, very rare again, uh, there are some emails that just by clicking it and, and opening the email, um, you can potentially uh, bring a threat into your computer. However, again, it's very, very rare. Can you give us some tips on how to kind of identify that or um, any, any pointers? Um, again, that's, that's, you're gonna have to use your common sense on those ones. Um, oftentimes you wanna be very critical of who is sending you the email. That's also oftentimes gonna be a very uh, big telltale sign. Um, if it's someone that you do know, that's when you want to look at the subject and make sure that the subject isn't something that looks out of the ordinary. Like, like if you're not expecting, um, you know, some like a lot of times they, they will disguise these emails will disguise themselves as like uh, uh, death notifications uh, um, or like some tragic news. Blackmailing. Yeah, and so you just have to keep an eye out and be like, it, it does is this seem realistic? If you're really curious and you're not very sure that's when it'd be a good time to use your cell phone and call someone or use a phone and call your family members and ask them about that then instead of going through the email so it sounds like all of these phishing attempts are kind of trying to get you to jump the gun and kind of really excite your emotions and like i love you or something you should be afraid of so oh yeah it's always best to report these like most emails have or most email sites have a reporting option that you can do so it gets notified, you know, and flagged. So yeah, they, let's say, um, I know you also mentioned the pop-up types of um, the adware. So I know I've had several patrons come up to me, something popped up on my computer. What do I do? Did I break it? So is it dangerous in the moment when it pops up? Kind of like with the email, is it dangerous when you open it up? Or is it when you're clicking on things that that's dangerous? For when you're browsing on the internet and you're, and you open up a website and then it's like lags a second, and then all of a sudden a bunch of ads pop up and whatnot. Um, that's not gonna really do any harm besides possibly slow down the computer if it's not a very strong computer, um, just because it's having to load all these ads. Um, all you have to really do is wait a second, let all the ads pop up. Um, and then you can either just close the whole uh, web page back out of the web page, or if you uh, actually need to view this website, oftentimes you'll be able to click out of the ads. Um, and op but oftentimes when you can, the close option, the window close button for them is like often hidden. So it'll either be, you know, like a very light color or it'll even match the, the color of the background. And that's when you kind of had to be tricky with it. Um, my advice in those situations are you probably shouldn't be on that website anyways. And any kind of website that um, doesn't respect its user base um, enough to not have ads like that um, doesn't deserve your business or your site or your viewership. That's a very excellent point. Thank you. Dr. Shaw, do you have any questions? Yes, uh, Peyton and Mark, you have done an excellent job in educating us in this uh, topic. And um, I would like just to add a little bit uh, more into the email security. Uh, you did mention that you might receive an email showing the name of somebody that you dearly know, you know, to establish the trust, to catch your, you know, your attention for that case. And that's one step. but if you look closely, the name may be very familiar to you, but when you open it to see the actual email behind it, the email address is very different. So that's one area also you can pay attention to or you want to look at just to verify, is this really coming from somebody from TLU that I know for that case or a friend that I know his or her email. The name might look the same, very familiar, but the email address behind it is very different. And once you see that, you just stop from there. You block it. That's one thing I actually wanted to touch on a, a bit ago. Yeah, a, a couple of times 
during my time here at TLU, I've gotten a couple of emails from high official people like, say, the vice president of academic affairs. And uh, they're saying things like, uh, uh, this job is available here for this much pay and uh, and uh, click here to to apply. You know, and of course, the email would actually be an Outlook one. It's instead of the TLE registered uh, uh, yes. domain. You know, so so yeah, you, you do have to be careful when it comes to that. And and also, like, what the vice president of academic affairs, who probably oversees so many functions on campus, actually uh, be concerned with this weird job that we don't even know the description of. Mm -hmm. But but yeah, <laughs> good example. Good example. And um, maybe can I ask you guys to help us uh, um, with uh, the the cell phone world? You know, we majority of us uh, we have cell phones around us, uh, and I would say that uh, most of the population don't have access to the desktop and laptops, but most of us have cell phones. So how about the cell phone security, where we do receive those? emails and messages and so forth and the websites that we navigate using our cell phones how can we protect those devices um so they cell phones are often at not as as they're not at as much threat they don't experience as much threat as a computer because a lot of the viruses that are that you find or a lot of the threats you find are specifically written for computers however that doesn't mean that your cell phones aren't completely uh uh, safe from them. You want to use the same practices that you will use, like checking the the, the actual email address, checking the name, checking the subject titles, um, using all that to um, negate uh, getting any viruses on your cell phone, especially now because of how common cell phones are, like you're saying, Dr. Shao, that um, a lot of people have will have these over um, a computer of some sort. So you have a lot of personal information on there. You often have a lot of contacts that if you do have, get uh, certain viruses, they can access all of that. And then again, that's how that's a fast way for them to spread. Thank you. Uh, Mark, do you have anything you'd like to add to that? Uh, not really, just that common sense doesn't have to be limited to simply a computer or a single device. <laughs> yes, sounds good. Um, <clears throat> maybe another follow-up question now. Let's go back to using desktops and laptops and maybe tablets as well. Uh, as far as the software security, what would you recommend for users to look at or to have or to download to secure their devices to help us with that? Because we are the weakest link. Human beings are the weakest link when it comes to computer security. So we, that's why we use those softwares. So is, is there any kind of software you'd like to recommend to community members to look at or to find out more about it and it's also affordable and that kind of thing? So there's a variety of, uh, of anti-malware, antivirus computer uh, software. Um, and really the best advice um, is to you know, shop around. There's, there's plenty of options just like anything else. You, wouldn't, you don't just find the first one and then say, Hey, I'm going to buy that one. You really want to look around, um, look at reviews, look at uh, personal reviews, see what, find out what you want in a, in a mal, an anti malware or antivirus where, um, uh, cause a lot of them, uh, personally, um, I don't have any personal recommendations, but I do have a few that you should avoid. Uh, one that I particularly don't like is Norton security, which, um, although it is a very, uh, good security system, it often acts as, essentially add where where it'll be it'll constantly remind you almost daily even multiple times a day to be like hey you need to renew your thing your computer's at risk all this crap and it's like it's uh um, it can be very annoying even though it is um still protecting it um you don't want to you don't want to get something that's supposed to block adware and malware and then it's going to basically act as malware or adware um, one example i can think of there is mac keeper that's for for Mac computers, and uh, I had that once, and I, of course, I, I did not. I know nothing. I did uh, as I do now, and uh, it basically just kept on showing these pop-ups like, uh, "You have this many threats. Click here to, to, uh, start a scan now," or you know, talking about trials and all. And you basically have to be very careful that uh, that the the anti-software viruses are uh, are not malicious like that or at least not that uh frequent you know 
and trying to exploit you because because mac keeper also uh yes it offers uh it says uh uh, that you have problems sometimes even when you don't and uh it's trying to get you to pay for services but you basically don't need so yeah just one thing to be very mindful of good thank you and uh for the uh, microsoft product uh, especially windows 10 it comes with a microsoft defender so by default you have some security there it's called microsoft defender it's very powerful, it works very well. You just wanna make sure you update your computer when you're prompted to do so, uh, because uh, usually uh, those definitions needs to be uh, updated all the time. So for window security, if, especially if you have Windows 10, Microsoft Defender is a free, and that means you don't purchase anything. As long as you have Windows 10, you got it, it's there. Uh, you just have to make sure your computer is uh, up to date but also you can purchase many other software programs out there to supplement security uh, for your devices. So jumping back to browsing, um, I know a question we get a lot here at the library is, let's say I looked up something common like TurboTax is one that we get a lot where they'll search Tur TurboTax, but then in the Google search list, they'll have hundreds upon hundreds that say TurboTax. What is a good indicator that you're on the right site? To make sure you're on the right site, you want to look at the uh, URL address. Oftentimes, that can be a tell tale. Um, make sure, making sure that you're that you have the right URL. Again, you can look that up. Um, a good way to avoid clicking on the wrong one is anytime I use Google. Um, a lot. It's often like the first two or three results are they will say add. Make sure this is small letters, um, but make sure. You're not clicking on those because although sometimes those will take you to the proper site, they do not always. Um, that that's a paid spot that anyone can buy and put their link there. Then Google most often times doesn't really care um, what the link is as long as it's not like extremely malicious, um, which can redirect you to a site that you did not originally want to be on. Very good. And I know also um, one pointer that we give to our community usually is to look at the very ending of that URL. Um, usually most things that people are looking up that are important, it'll say .gov, .org. You want to make sure it's not saying something like .net or .click, .something else, you know. You want to make sure it's a reputable thing like .org or .gov Absolutely. or .edu <laughs> for a new searcher or a new person navigating the internet that's unsure, they've heard about the internet and all the things that it can offer, but they're afraid to jump online. Do you have any advice for them? Um, I would just tell them to be patient. There's no hurry. Uh, that's kind of like the trend nowadays is that everything's gotta be fast. Everything's gotta be really efficient. Um, and just because you're on the internet does not mean you have to be fast or efficient. You could be as slow as you want. There's, no, there's really no rush. Um, again, like I said earlier, you really wanna, um, when you're when you're walking through things you want to think to yourself like if someone came up to me and was telling me these things like would i would that be something that i would like, go along with um oftentimes that'll help you uh, avoid phishing um scams and uh, people trying to abuse your trust um again so just be slow um don't be afraid to ask questions there's tons of young people around um most time more often than not um so people who do have the knowledge are more than happy to, to share um, their knowledge and to help you uh, safely navigate. One thing I would add to that is that uh, I know there's a lot of dangers out there in the internet. It's a big place and it often seems very intimidating at times and I certainly feel that way sometimes. But I think the best way to approach it is to be optimistically cautious if that makes sense. Uh, don't be afraid to to go out there and search, but be cautious of what you find. Um, again, I can't stress this enough. If you if you're not sure about something, just don't click on it. Uh, just stick to sites that you know are reliable. And of course, as Peyton said, uh, having others to help you uh, try to guide you through it really really is helpful. It's one of the best pieces of advice I could give. Just find someone else. So yeah. Excellent. Those are very nice advices from uh, both Peyton and, uh, and Mark. And as I said, 
if I refer back to what I shared with you before, uh, human is the weakest link. We are the weakest link in when you think about security. And we are the ones also to be very cautious and make that decision. But I, I like the way you put it, both of you, that asking question is not a bad thing. So if you're not sure about it, going to ask anybody, maybe family member or anyone around you, is this the right site? Is this the right address? I'm a little bit not quite sure about it. That's a very important step that this is a little bit suspicious, then let's verify. So you've said it very well. And I would like to go ahead and uh, thank Mara um, and also thank my students uh, for joining us this afternoon and for sharing their knowledge uh, about uh, you know security issues and how to surf the internet and what to be considered. Uh, we are very pleased and thanks again. All right, thank you Dr. Shao and your students for joining us. And anybody out there that's watching this, we do have one last session that's coming up on April 14th and registration is open for that. And that will be on Zoom for beginners. So if you are new to this whole Zoom thing that is kind of taking the world by storm, this is your class to register for. Uh, so thank you for joining us and we'll see you soon. Bye.